All right. So uh, originally, I only, I didn't really think I would just talk about my story. Um, I only have about 10 minutes worth of slides. And uh, I've decided now after listening to everybody else that I do want to talk about my story. Um, so I started in recruiting at the end of the last millennium, I guess. Uh, so around, gosh, I think 98, not on my LinkedIn, because I don't want age discrimination to be like super transparent, but uh, I see Paul, please do, store it. Okay, geez. Um, I love talking about bullying and sourcing. I feel very comfortable doing that. To be honest with everyone, I don't feel comfortable talking about myself in terms of like my story and my career, because it's, it's been kind of crazy. And um, yeah, in the late 90s, I had a chance to join Volt Staffing Group. Um, I brought, I did my homework and I knew like a couple of people that worked there. They, I knew they wanted to give me a shot. Um, the night before, I literally typed up my resume and printed it out. Yeah, Van told us to write our story. I'm going to do that. And so did Carmen. Carmen said, write about what you know and what you love, it sounded like. So I'm going to maybe get back into writing. But uh, long story short is I got uh, a chance. I got an opportunity to work at uh, a staffing agency as a IT recruiter. I didn't really know what that was, but I just knew um, that people were helping other people uh, get jobs. And, and even better, I was starting to hear about uh, how you can help employers find good fits for for opening, you know, good fit candidates for, for the different openings. And it started to get me to shift my thinking into, uh, even back in the late 90s, believe it or not, um, as a young kid, uh, you know, fresh, fresh out of school. In fact, I dropped out of college and I started this job at Bolt. And my very first assignment uh, was Boeing. And, you know, I knew who Boeing, I knew you know, there was this amazing plane company in the area this is in seattle and i, I definitely heard about it and so <clears throat> you know this young kid going out uh to meet with hiring managers at boeing and the first thing they asked me is like how are you going to be different than everybody else uh that's been supporting us and i didn't know you know oh well kathy says oh my god yes my biggest and first client assigned was boeing at 19. okay cool i was 20 kathy this is in tukwila uh yeah, the Tukwila office of, of Volt Services Group. Uh, so we were supporting Boeing and the, the, this kind of rough and gruff hiring manager uh, asked me, how are you going to be different? And I said, well, I'm only like a couple months into recruiting. Um, I don't know a lot, uh, but I do know what it's like to look for a job. And I do know what it's like to be a candidate. Uh, and at that point, the Internet was coming out as well. And I said, you know, I'm definitely going to care about how we treat uh, the applicants for your position. I didn't even know that that was an issue. Um, I just knew from my own personal experience, like I thought it was cool that Bolt gave me a chance. And, oh my gosh, you're assigning me to Boeing. And I just told the hiring manager, I'm just going to do the same. I want to pass that forward to someone else. Um, and, and so, you know, that's kind of how I got my start in recruiting. Uh, fast forward to 2003, uh, so a little over 20 years ago now, uh, I had my first job as a sourcer at Microsoft um, and met a lot of people, uh, including uh, Glenn, who's in chat, and some others uh, through the years that you know, had, have come and gone um, at Microsoft learning about sourcing. Um, and we'll get into some more of my current experience in a later slide here, but I just wanted to start by saying, I think sourcing is dead. Uh, long live CRM, that is my topic today. And, and when I say sourcing is dead, I'm gonna unpack a little bit in the, in the 10 minutes I have left, but, um, I know it's a bold thing to say, especially because it's provided livelihood for myself and for my family uh, and a business now that I run called Paired Sourcing. I'm the founder of, we've been doing it about eight and a half years now. So it'll be nine years old in July. Uh, but I think at least if you'll bear with me, traditional sourcing is dead. Um, what Ronnie and uh, uh, Mark were showing, I believe uh, both were, were showing us earlier, like some, some real sourcing or search. Uh, but I think sourcing, as we've all kind of grown up and, and come to know it, I think it is dead, and, I, and I'm going to break that down. Oh, Tamara says she worked at Boeing Argo Systems in spring of 91. Holy smoke. Steve Levy giving me the Jeremy is now OG. I need to screenshot that. It takes me 20 years to impress Steve, but we're finally there. Okay. Next slide. 
Now I'm curious if uh, if we have a GIF here. It's not much of an animation, but I thought, hey, maybe I'll try to throw a GIF in to my slides here. Um, <laughs> so let me know if Tupac is is winking at you. Uh, and shout out to our mutual friends as well, Matt Charney, encouraging me to put Tupac in my slide. Yeah, Shannon says it's amazing how much sourcing has changed. It really has. Uh, and if anybody wants to hit me up, I'm super, if I'm not known for anything else, I'm super transparent and kind of like brutally honest and direct about how I've seen sourcing change. And my first point here, kind of rest in peace sourcing, uh, lowercase s, uh, the quotes and the air quotes, uh, rest in peace sourcing. So I just think it has changed so much. Um, <laughs> the lag is comical. Thanks, Chris. Aquaman, shout out. I went to your webinar recently as well. I love the chat today. Thank you guys so much. It's, sometimes I do get lonely uh, working. I do have an in-person protege who I'm teaching uh, kind of this new wave of sourcing uh, to uh, named Aiden. And uh, he gets to come and sit with me at work here. But uh, it's really cool to connect with you guys online. All right. So rest in peace sourcing. What do I mean? Like uh, Traditional workflow. So my, my first point is traditional workflow is now 90% automated. Um, you know, back in the day, as it were, we used to manually copy paste people off LinkedIn and put them into an Excel spreadsheet, right? Um, I still do that now. I think that hasn't changed, but uh, a lot of that can be automated. And I'll save my fanboy uh, for higher easy slides uh, that are coming up. I'll save my thunder for that. But if you, if you think about sending an email sequence, we, we didn't have that you know, even 10 years ago uh, for sure. So that was a lot of our time. Like if you took three hours of sourcing time that you might have in that day as a recruiter, let's say you only have out of your eight hours of productivity, you've got three hours that are sourcing. So research and outreach, copy pasting, and then sending manual one by one emails, like that's gone. Let's just be honest with ourselves. That's that's kind of an outdated or dead or deprecated uh, idea uh, or or strategy. So traditional workflow is now ninety percent automated. Feel free to say if you disagree with me in chat. Feel free to say that. Now some people have to work a hundred percent manually because they don't have tools. Kevin Luck. All right, totally agree. Thank you so much. We're moving on. That gets me to move off my point too. Uh, rest in peace sourcing point B. Tools have taken over. Um, gosh, I wrote down in like five different tools between Ronnie and Mark. So uh, I'm learning still every single time I attend these and show up for these with a good attitude. A shout out to Dan on that. But like, um, I'm learning about new tools. I'm hopefully going to introduce you guys to a new tool called Easy2. Um, so wink on that. But like, tools have taken over. There's a ton of tools. I mean, we're using tools just to even do this right now. And, and if it wasn't for what happened, um, you know, almost four or five years almost now ago, uh, at least four years ago, for sure, we, we might be doing this in person, we might be sitting around at a luncheon. Um, and it might be more local to people that could just drive in for it. And that's a different thing. Uh, so tools have really taken over. Um, just to be honest, one of my uh, goals for this year was to have less tools at the end of this year than I did at the beginning. Um, so I'm trying to take back some of the humanity, and I love those talks that I heard earlier as well. Oh gosh, I got to go faster. Data. So resumes, profiles, applications—they all create data, and it it can be overwhelming if you're only looking through it the lens of traditional sourcing. I need more data. I got all these tools. I got to run all these tools. Um, I got to run a clean process. I've got to do it at volume. I have to scale all these things. It can be overwhelming, especially to the anyone that's new, um, where they're like, gosh, for every single person, and I need to source a bunch of people for my opening, or and or uh, a bunch of people for my opening are coming my way because of the market or whatever, and now I've got a lot of reading to do, a lot of writing to do, um, and it can be overwhelming. Gosh, reading chat is probably bad content, but it's good for me. I appreciate when Jerry, Ronnie, and Mark say they're still learning to a reminder. Thank you. Uh, formerly known as the Minnesota Headhunter, right? All right, number two, CRM is alive and well. So there's good news. There's good news. 
relationships, which if you're new to CRM, um, R is the relationships, and I'm gonna start going faster here, will always win over process, tech, et cetera. So relationships will always win. Um, we have that as a community here. We have that in the broader sense of even the, the community that exists on LinkedIn and over on X, but relationships will, will always be the important thing. Um, and, and point B of, of CRM is why reinvent the wheel? And I'll, I'll save that for later. And then last but not least, for sure, kind of my meta point to all this is, guess what? We won't need to source if we already have them sourced. <laughs> live streams. Wow, Mike, thank you so much. Well, this is your live stream for today. OK, so I have to move my chat for just a hot second here uh, so I can read what's on the screen. Uh, but four boxes, go with me real quick, upper left. We need to sell our story better to attract the best talent. This is a comment. These are all comments from my world. I am a practitioner. I have a little boutique called Paired Sourcing. We're the inventors of the sourcing sprint. And these are like real, um, not just feelings, but real things. Uh, there's a quote here, but real um, issues that companies are currently having, like employers are currently having. They'll say things like, we need to sell our story better to attract the, attract the best talent. You know, meaning, sure, there's a lot of people out looking for work. There's a lot of qualified people impacted. There's uh, tools that help us uh, get 800 million profiles at our fingertips. Um, but once you start engaging those people over time, you're going to need to be better at telling your story. OK, cool. That's where CRM comes in. Point two. Upper right, competition for talent comes increasingly from employers outside our sector. Solve that with CRM. Well, how are you going to do that, Jared? Well, relationships. That's the R part. R for relationships. Develop relationships. Maybe you talk to a candidate even though they're not looking. They reply to your email and say, gosh, this sounds really cool. Uh, you should have hit me up six months ago. Timing, timing, timing. Well, if... A lot of what we do in recruiting is kind of at the mercy of the timing gods, then, okay, cool. Well, maybe I'll hit you up in a year and a half. Wow, a year and a half? Yeah, how about a year? How about nine months? And so starting to put people, and we used to call it like a tickler file, but starting to put people um, you know, out on your calendar and storing their information in your pipeline, in your tool, and then remembering to reach out to them and having the notes of what you talked to them about the last time you talked to them, and having that at scale over the course of maybe thousands of candidates, that's super important. Bottom left, we see high candidate drop-off rates during the hiring process, especially with source candidates. CRM, not just hit them up later, but if you had built a relationship with that person over the course of smaller interactions last year, the year before, and now you're revisiting that person as, as potentially a good fit, timing, opportunity, et cetera, you know, you're, they're not going to drop off because you've been keeping them warm and getting to know them. Bottom right, real CEO of a real a car company. Uh, I'll just read this. A company that wants to produce the best cars needs the best brains. That's exactly how our approach at our organization. Um, that's exactly our approach at our organization. But such talented people can no longer be recruited with the post and praise strategy. They have to be looked for and found. And I would add to that. Um, we need to get to know them. It's so important to rethink our recruiting strategy. So CEOs are talking about that as well. All right, now here's a new slide uh, for the Hire Easy team. I didn't have this when I submitted my slides, but lo and behold, as I'm prepping for this quick uh, conversation and doing my own homework and research, I see on my Google News feed, Hire Easy, right here, hitting the news, uh, launches CRM platform to empower TA leaders and recruiters. Uh, here's the, the news wire. I would recommend everyone read this. It's important for your work. And if you showed up today, you probably care. Uh, and I'm not trying to shill uh, their, their product. I'm trying to tell you that we are evolving as a community. And this line captured it really well. Hire Easy 2 signals Hire Easy's evolution. And I think we're all evolving from a candidate sourcing and engagement solution. In other words, a transactional, like top of funnel or early in the process as a source or recruiter to a complete CRM platform, and we need to become complete uh, talent acquisition professionals. The only CRM built for recruiters by recruiters, 
Uh, real quick, some insights. I know I'm going one minute over. I apologize. I should have went faster with my story. I didn't even get into what I've been up to lately, but you can hit me up. Um, CRM, in, CRM insights galore. A lot of this information is very important when you are partnering or pairing up with your hiring uh, leaders and your hiring teams. Um, they want to know what are, what are the titles, skills, companies, past companies. They want to know where people are at in the process. Um, you know, they might care about things like uh, funnel conversion. And these are all things a CRM, regardless of its, uh, uh, how you uh, implement the technology and what workflow you come up with. But these are some metrics that we can get into. All right, this is the last one, and I'm going to be done. Find out, figure out, freak out. Uh, and you can feel free to reach out to me. There's my email address. Uh, but real quickly, that, do you have a, a CRM? Uh, does your sales team have one? Maybe you can like borrow some ideas from that. And remember, and when you start freaking out about the overwhelming data, just tell yourself, put it on your post-it note, uh, like Paul, we won't need to source if we already have them sourced. So if you're slow right now or even out of work, uh, build those pipelines. You know you're going to be looking for a JavaScript engineer like six months from now. Start working on that now. So when you get the rec, boom, you hit it right away uh, and you're the rock star. Connect with me on LinkedIn. That's my short, quick talk. And uh, you know, put some hearts in chat if you enjoyed my talk. Thank you.